Imagine a world where you can sail right up to the North Pole. Is that climate change is already affecting every the part Louisiana of the United is States. is losing a football field worth of land every hour. Of wildfires. It's something that needs to be addressed now. Four reefs are going to be wiped out within the next 30 years. The largest ice sheet in the northern hemisphere is simply melting away. Sea level rise. Extreme dangers of climate change. Climate change. Climate change. Climate change. Climate change. Hey, Brad, you know, I don't get this whole climate change nonsense. Yeah. I don't get why people are like, oh, it's a big deal. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's kind of unclear. Just like, what's actually going on? Why do people care? It's like, not that big a deal. It's definitely just a hoax, and it's definitely just something the government. Are you saying it's together. like politically charged? I guess so. Wow. That's a good point. You know, I'm not like so against the actual facts of it. I just think like, who really cares? Like I'm not really vibing with the winter anyway. And it's just like, just wear some shorts or something, you know, bro? Like, and like, what scientists? People keep telling me scientists. I don't even know who these scientists are. And who it's says crazy. Who says it's real? Like if you can't see it, it's not there. That's an interesting thought. You know, and like who, even if pretend it is real, who needs the Eastern Seaboard, California, Antarctica, the sunlight in China? Like, I came a private jet. I'm here for a good time, not a long time, you know? You know, I have this friend, he's in Florida, but like, let me give him a call and see. Okay. You know, he knows a lot about science and stuff. Wow, he's just not picking up. Guess he's like not a good friend. I can't think of why he's not picking up. Hold on, let me call my friend in California. All right. He's not picking up either at all. Um, you know, let me call my friend. He lives in Australia, but like, he's always around. He lives in Australia. What's going on there? Damn, this dude's not picking up. People just don't care at all. I know me and Brett know that climate change isn't real, but we sat down with the leaders of the improv troupe Function Lost to learn more. So, tell us, tell us more. Do you believe in climate change? No. I'm not familiar with the subject. Um, there's been a lot of mumbo jumbo about it recently in the past few days, but I can't say I'm familiar with the subject. And I don't like it. I don't think it rolls off the tongue. That's all I have to say. That's a good point. What I really like to put out there is like unicorns are fake and climate change is fake, and I think they're just in the same universe. What do you think about that? I think that's. I don't think you should raise unicorns to that. I mean, <sighs> shit. I do indeed. <laughs> Tell me why. I believe that if there is something that is putting our planet and our lives and humanity at risk, then we should pay attention to that. I, I've seen no evidence that it does not exist and plenty of evidence that it does. So I see it on the news, I see it online, I see it. I'm with Noah Freeman Cassis, a junior at Northampton High School, and my question for you is, why do we care if the climate's warming? Well, we care because the climate warming is boring. going to affect every single one of us. And it's, it's really, it's not just about, you know, temperatures rising. It's about kind of this global unrest, which is already building up. You know, we see these massive fires in Australia. We see, uh, you know, sea levels rising. We see larger and larger storms uh, pummeling the Caribbean and people are already dying. Uh, but it's going to get a lot, hell of a lot worse if we don't act decisively in the next 10 years to limit our warming to 2 degrees Celsius or less. Um, do you believe in climate change? No, I do not, though I do believe in climate change. Okay, so that's what the school thought, but like, what do actual people downtown in Northampton really think? Do I think that there's man-made problems that is leading to climate disaster? Yes. Do you believe in climate change? I do. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You believe in climate change? If you've gone back through cycles of time, you see the temperature fluctuates up and down throughout cycles. I also consider that the Industrial Revolution has been at worse or best since the 1800s. You're talking less than 200 years of time, which pollution would cause such a massive shift. Is it a part of it? Yes. Is the whole thing? No. All the science points to the evidence that there's 
global climate change. Okay, what are some effects that you've seen or experienced or heard of? Uh, increased wildfires, um, changes to global temperature, either increasing or decreasing around the world. Um, I think that even if you don't believe in it as climate change, that there's so many things that like improving efficiency and reducing energy usage, um, even like it improves the economy. So there's so many other benefits to doing things that will reduce the impact on climate change. So like, even if you don't believe in it, you should be supporting these initiatives. Well, I think, I think that they're not uh, really looking into the uh, science of it all. And I think that they're uh, blindsided. Often they're supporting uh, greedy, greedy people, greedy corporations, and uh, and actually the the corporate welfare of fossil fuels is a uh, pretty sad thing. It exists whether they believe in it or not. Uh, if you can think of a good thing to say to people who say that to you, I would like to know. <laughs> We wanted to know how to respond, so we went to educate ourselves and talked to an expert at the high school, Mr. Moylan. So there's been a lot of news recently about how Australia is on fire, all the forest fires, but like if the ocean level sea levels are rising, how is there fire? Like that doesn't make sense. How could they possibly be related? Uh, well, they're both related in the sense that climate is regulated by uh, the gases in our atmosphere, the sun in ocean temperatures. So even though they, they can both be happening at the same time, and caused by the same source, which is increased global temperatures. It's gonna dry out land in Australia, lengthen the natural fire season, and also cause sea levels to rise, which isn't gonna put out those fires in Australia. Uh, but it is gonna increase the frequency of like storms and stuff. Okay, so maybe the fires are real, but yep. then like, how, how could humans possibly, like I don't see any humans just like lighting trees on fire. <laughs> well, there are actually a lot of humans lighting trees on fire. If uh, you look at products that have soybean oil in them, uh, palm oil, so the best way to grow those crops is to light your forest on fire, clear everything, and then plant that type of crop for, for oil, for products. And so people are actually lighting trees on fire. And that is a double whammy because it adds CO2 to the air, which is a greenhouse gas. And it also gets rid of the trees that are soaking up CO2 out of the atmosphere. And so the net result is more CO2 in the air, which is a greenhouse gas. Okay, so maybe, Maybe the fires are real and carbon dioxide is real. We can pretend it's not, you know, a hoax by the Chinese. But then, like, why do we care if it gets warmer at all? It's winter out. It's cold as hell. Like, yeah. wear some shorts. Okay. So that's a common misconception that climate change is a change in long-term weather patterns over, like, 30 years. Weather, day-to-day -day weather, like we see if you want to wear, like, this weekend, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be January and we're going to have, like, a 60-day weekend day. Um, that's not climate change. That's weather. But if you look at the patterns over 30 years, you see that we're getting warmer. And in fact, every decade for the last 100 years has been the hottest decade on record. 2017 was the hottest year ever recorded ever since we've been recording temperature. But then how does it actually end up affecting people? Like, why should we care? Well, there's lots of reasons. One is it just affects the planet we live on, which impacts the biodiversity and wildlife that we have. Uh, and it does actually, actually impact humans. So humans will always be around People say that you know the world's gonna be destroyed because of climate change. That's not gonna be true. Humans will always be around. Um, we are gonna see differences on, on in climate-related issues. One of the things we'll see is that you know how it's really warm near the equator. Well, that area of warmth is spreading towards the poles, which means that species can live in places where they never could before. And we're seeing that in the United States, the, our pine forests are being destroyed by a pine beetle that usually usually only lives in warm climates, but as it's warming up more north, we're seeing that beetle move up, up north and impacting our forestry industry up here. Well, I'm going to be honest, I've never seen a pine beetle. So how can I possibly believe you saying that pine beetles are moving north? I can't even see climate change happening or even pine beetles. Pine beetles. Well, at some point you have to trust uh, scientists whose job it is to investigate that and who have n nothing to lose or to gain by communicating scientific information. So great examples would be the IPCC, which is the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. NOAA is another example, the National Oceanic Atmospheric Association, and NASA. And so those are all trustworthy, scientific-based organizations that you should be looking to for data on climate change. So what, what ways are climate change actually affecting the world? How is, how, how is it changing people's lives? Well, there's, there's a direct correlation between biodiversity protection and our economy. For biotourism or even just uh, crop production um, and 
uh, diseases spreading in places where they never had spread before. In addition to that, more um, warmer temperatures means more water vapors in the air, and that's a fuel for storms. And so we're seeing more intense storms happen, and that can claim lives of people. Okay, so you know, after all this learning we've had, what what could I do if I decided that maybe climate change was real? What could I do as an individual, and what can we do as a community to help prevent it? Okay, so. The biggest sectors that contribute to greenhouse gas emissions worldwide are electricity production. So if you conserve electricity or you make electricity in a way that doesn't have any greenhouse gas emissions, like with solar or wind versus making it with coal, uh, that would be, help us bring down our greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, if you actually eat <clears throat> lower on the food chain, so um, that would help because meat production um, is meat is produced on such a large scale that there's a methane association with livestock. And so if we're all eating less meat, then we won't have as much methane in the air, which is an, a pretty potent greenhouse gas. So you want to eat lower on the food chain. Um, and also the number one thing that you can do is try and enact policy in your country um, that limits fossil fuel use and or benefits the society or uh, incentivizes the society to uh, invest in anti-fossil fuel sources of energy. So you seem fairly knowledgeable, but if I didn't believe you, where should I go to find out more? Okay, so if you want to find out anything about climate change, the, the three best sources to go to are science-based sources. They're not, there's no industry um, component to them. They are the IPCC, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. They are NOAA, the National Oceanic Atmospheric Association, and NASA. Those are the three credible sources. So if you ever find yourself in an argument with somebody who doesn't acknowledge that climate change is happening, ask them where they're getting their source, where they're getting the information from, what source are they getting it from. We thought it was only fair if we talked to an expert from the other side of the spectrum. Well, thanks so much for sitting down with me. I really appreciate an expert's opinion. Can you tell me a little bit about your position as a scientist on climate change? Yeah, yeah, I'm a scientist. Um, um, I see you're a big fan of Chevron. Is there any affiliation there? Especially with the wildfires happening in Australia, they're caused by drought and there's been an increased frequency of them. And many people think it's caused by old companies such as yourself and you've done nothing to respond. What would you say? Well, I don't really think oil companies are associated with drought. Um, we're putting a liquid out into the world, a natural liquid that is from deep down under, and we're just bringing it to the surface and making it accessible to humans. As a grad student at Northeastern, you put out your senior thesis on the existential threat of climate change, and yet now it seems like your tune has changed. What happened? I was young. People people change throughout their lives, um, and getting this opportunity to work at Chevron has really opened my eyes. If if you would say, um, to there's I see so much more now. I see a more broad spectrum of people, from our clients to our employees to really everybody. When I'm driving to work every day, um, so I really see the truth now. What's your name again? I'm sorry, I didn't catch it. Don't worry about it. Okay. Well, um. Nice to meet you. The IPCC has issued a report that we must keep the global temperature below 2 degrees Celsius. The rise of temp will result in a spike in wildfires migration and will cost us trillions of dollars as well as an invaluable amount of lives. If we continue to use fossil fuels until they run out, we will cause damage that with our current knowledge seems to be irreversible. What this report says is frankly very difficult to adjust and is that we must move away from fossil fuels dramatically and quickly. There is no longer time for a painless incremental process. So what can we do to stop the effects of climate change? And if things have gotten this bad, is there even hope? Among the chaos arose a variety of ideas, but most prominently the Green New Deal. This resolution was created by activists and then handed off to politicians such as Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and Ed Markey. At its core, the Green New Deal simply addresses what needs to be done to keep the planet habitable. This means bringing fossil fuel emissions down to as close to zero as possible. It is inarguable that this will mean a dramatic change in the way our industries make products such as steel or vehicles will inevitably change our lifestyle. Zero emissions means no coal, no oil, no combustion engines, none of it. High speed and sustainable rail will replace planes when possible, and food will be grown locally and probably at least for a period of time be more expensive. 
This means there will be a cost for the oil companies, but also for hardworking Americans who are no more responsible for climate change than anyone else. What makes the Green New Deal both enormously impressive as well as alienating to many more conservative politicians, both Democratic and Republican, is that it also includes a way to protect people from the effects of our shifting economy. Before we even get to protecting our individual rights, we should address that if it's, if it's even possible to pay for a new deal. First off, it's important to recognize that among the benefits of sustainability is that we'll spend less on healthcare, as polluted air has been proved and unfortunately tested to leading to strokes, cancer, and asthma. In addition, much of our military foreign policy in the Middle East has been decided by our reliance on oil. This has given other countries leverage and forced us to spend money on the military, fighting wars that could be avoided by a sustainable lifestyle. Lastly, instead of having our government issue low interest loans to oil companies, we can invest in solar wind and other sustainable energy that will lead to a sustainable future. However, for coal workers, this, is, this transition to sustainable energy will mean unemployment for millions. It's unrealistic that politicians can walk up to someone and say, we'll take away your jobs, savings, lifestyle. Would you like to sign my bill? This is where the Green New Deal promises to protect our rights to employment. The government would help to transition workers from oil and coal industries into sustainable energy. In addition, this resolution proposes for job training, economic redevelopment, and even to make sure coal workers are compensated after they lose their jobs until they get new ones, which will be employed by the government if necessary. To summarize in two parts, the Green New Deal sets guidelines and rules for a sustainable future. Secondly, it addresses and accepts that there will be problems and people will be hurt. However, it is necessary and it's created a plan for people that will be hurt inevitably to be the safest and most successful in the transition. This will be dramatic and you will notice. However, lastly, and maybe most uniquely, the Green New Deal provides a path to follow that will cause the least hurt and suffering to those who inevitably will have to. The Green New Deal is not perfect. Ideally, nobody would be perfect in these situations. However, regardless of political identity, the science proves that we must address human-made climate change dramatically and now. This is not an elitist issue, this is a human rights issue. And our politicians who are supposed to speak for the people are now not.